This is the OTB Television Network. Good morning and welcome to Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Laggett and with me is Dick Powell. Hi, Jean. Good morning, Dick. How are you? Uh, very good. Terrific weekend of racing. Just uh, a lot to cover, a lot to follow, and, and many, uh, many three-year-olds move forward towards the Derby and a couple might be falling behind. Three-year-olds were definitely in the spotlight this weekend. We had exciting three-year-old action on both coasts as well as at the fairgrounds in between. So uh, we're going to have a good look at that today. We're going to be looking forward to also taking a look at uh, some three-year-old fillies on Saturday at the Fairgrounds Oaks. And uh, we also had older sprinters going in Maryland and New York. And of course, closing weekend at Gulfstream Park was this past weekend. And they had an exciting race card on Saturday as well as Sunday. Yes, they did. The Florida Derby Day is always the culmination of their big season of racing. Every year, the Gulfstream meet seems to get bigger and better. And this year, four stake races on the Saturday card and lots of exciting racing on Friday and as well as Sunday. And also, they, they, they actually closed the following Tuesday with the Bonnie Miss with three rings who scratched out of the Florida Derby. But a big meet for Gulfstream finally getting to a close in the actual shift to Hialeah next Wednesday. Going back to Gulfstream, we are going to start off our look back at this past weekend stakes races by going back to Gulfstream on Friday. Friday afternoon, they ran the deputy minister to kick off their weekend. Deputy Minister was run for $100,000 added purse, seven furlongs, three-year-olds and up. Let's go down to South Florida for Tom Durkin's call. And they're off. Throne Discovery and Deuce Court. Master of Foxhounds and Good and Tough also right there. Moving up the chute, it is Deuce Court on the far outside, who is the early leader. Master of Foxhounds running second by ahead. Good and tough third toward the inside. Thrill and Discovery, El Lamonte is fifth. On the inside, Western Borders it was a hesitant beginning for Mint. It was now about four lengths behind the rest of the field. They're moving down the back stretch. Long shot, Deuce Court, the leader. Clicked off a quarter and 22 and one with Master of Foxhounds hard on his heels running in second. Good and tough third, El Lamonte in between horses still about five lengths behind. Thrown Discovery to his outside, followed by Western Mortars and Mint. Around the far turn, it's still Deuce Court and Master of Foxhounds. The long shot leaders round the turn. Good and Tough is wheeled into striking position on the outside third. On the inside, Western Borders, Elemonte still about four lengths from the lead. Thrown Discovery under the whip, farther back it's Mint. The field turns for home. The half went in 44 and three. It's Deuce Court, the leader at the top of the stretch. Good and Tough makes his move now. Toward the inside, Western Borders is now third. Master of Foxhounds fades to fourth. Mint is moving late. Final furlong, and Good and Tough kicks in and runs away from him. Good and Tough with a burst of energy blows him away in the last furlong. Impressive. Good and Tough to win by six on the line. And then Stablemates, Western Borders, and Mint, they were followed by Deuce Court fourth. Horse for course, Good and Tough ridden to victory here by Shane Sellers. Draws off to win by six easy lengths and the blazing fast time of 121 and three. The entry mates, Western Borders and Mint, uh, these are both trained by Mohammed Bubarak from the Buckram Oak Farm. They rally up for second and third, but no threat to the winner. Good and Tough broke its maiden on the Gulfstream main track last uh, winter in January for Frank Alexander and right back here today dominating this race and blazing fast time. So Good and Tough, the winner with Shane Sellers. Second, Western Borders, Johnny Velasquez. Third, Mint, Ivor Cohen. Running time for the seventh furlongs, a very quick 121 and 3 fifth seconds. Saturday was the focus of the weekend at Gulfstream Park, and this Saturday they ran four races of st graded stakes quality, of course capped off, as you mentioned, by the $750,000 Florida Derby. Uh, the first race, though, the first stakes event of the day was the Fort Lauderdale, a grade three event for three-year-olds and up $100,000 purse. They were going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. Let's head back down to South Florida for Tom Durkin's call. And they're off. El Mirasol wild event. Garbo on the outside. Sharp appeal and notoriety toward the rail. Nobody's 
over anxious for the lead. It is uh, Tekken now who's come on to get a short lead on the outside wild event. Those two will share the lead through some leisurely early fractions with Garbu third and Sharp Appeal fourth. Notoriety wrangled back to fifth. Divide and Conquer close to the slow pace sixth. And then it's Legs Galore. Elmira Soul trails the field. The first quarter goes in 24 flat. Around the first turn, Tekken and Wild Event continue to share the lead. Garbo sits outside them, running along in third. Then a sharp appeal for it, Divide and Conquer, about four and a half lengths from the lead, fifth. Notoriety, reserved in sixth position, legs galore, El Mirasol, the trailer, as they continue their run down the back stretch. The opening half mile in a fairly comfortable 48 seconds flat. Midway down the back stretch, with a half mile to go, it's still Tekken and Wild Event, and they continue to share the lead as they head for the far turn. Gar Garbu looms outside them third, sharp appeal fourth, then divide and conquer, notoriety, legs galore, still trailing his Elmira soul. Around the far turn, Wild Event's got a short lead, it's Wild Event in front by a head, Garbu to the attack as they come to the quarter pole, Tekken now drops back to third, sharp appeal is under a drive fourth, divide and conquer is put to the whip as the field turns for home, Garbu powers up, it's Garbu opening up on the field, he's pulling away from Wild Event and all the rest, Garbu flying past the eighth pole in front by four. Wild event, sharp appeal, divide and conquer, left in his wake. Garble full of run through the stretch here at Gulfstream today to win by five. South Florida's had some nice, consistently hot and dry weather. The turf course has firmed up pretty well. And Garbu and the normal suspects here, Jerry Bailey, Billy Mott, Strawberry Road, Alan Paulson, we've seen them win stake races throughout America on the grass especially. They're going to draw off to win by three and three quarter lengths. And, and course record time, wild event, good solid effort here with Shane Sellers. The 7 to 10 favorite checks in second. Sharp appeal, good solid uh, South Florida turf horse for Marty Wolfson. He's always in against the best down there. He winds up third here with Johnny Velasquez. But Garbu covers the mile and 16th in an amazingly fast 139 and 150. Continuing on with Saturday's exciting race card from Gulfstream Park, we're going to go next to the Creme Fresh Handicap. This is a grade three event, $75,000 guaranteed purse for three-year-olds and up. They're going a mile and a 16th, this time on the main track. They're in the gate. And they're off. Jazz Club, there goes Flax Jacket, Mike Smith gunning flax jacket to the lead sprinting as they race for the first turn and clears the field and rock and roll by two lengths jazz club now running third with anticipation is fourth followed by powerful goers fifth a break of five lengths and hanar san is already 12 lengths from the lead behaviors following him it's Flax Jacket who zips through an opening quarter in 23 and 2 and leads Rock and Roll by two lengths as they make the curve into the backstretch. Jazz Club third, the gray with anticipation is fourth behind a sharp pace. And then it's Powerful Gore. Another five and a half back to behavior. Hanar San is the last of them all. He's about 10 lengths from the lead as the field continues the run up the backstretch. The half in 46 and 4 fifth seconds. Testing fractions set by Flax Jacket. Rock and roll, sits back second, three lengths, Jazz Club third, another two and a half, back to with anticipation fourth. Powerful goer, Hanner Sands in between those two, and behavior, and there goes rock and roll, and he grabs the lead. Rock and roll runs right by Flax Jacket, who has run out of gas as they approach the quarter pole. Here comes Jazz Club into second, and Hanner Sand is uncoiling now. The field turns for home. Here comes Jazz Club on the outside to engage rock and roll. Hanar San continues to close third with one for long to go. It's Jazz Club in front. Rock and roll second. Hanar San third. 16th pole. Jazz Club will do it. Jazz Club going away by two. Rock and roll second. Hanar San third. Well, Martin Bailey were not able to win this one as Pat Day and Jazz Club rally from off the pace to draw off to win by two. Uh, pretty confident win lengths here. Nine to two, second choice in the, actually third choice in the betting. Uh, runs down rock and roll, the Bailey Mott combination here. And Jazz Club, a very well bred son of Dixieland Band, trained by Neil Howard. Gonna make a nice effort here and win. I think it's their first graded stakes event of, the, of his career. Jazz Club, the winner with Pat Day, second rock and roll winner of the Pennsylvania Derby last year with Jerry Bailey and Hannah Rasson. 
Shane Sellers checks in for third. Final time for the minor 16s, 142 and 3 fifths. Three-year-old sprinters were featured on Saturday in the Swale Stakes, a grade three event, a 75 or rather $100,000 added purse. Three-year-olds going seven furlongs in the Swale, very quick bunch of horses. Let's head back down to South Florida for Tom Durkin's call. And they're off. Texas Glitter off to a good start. So too for Yes It's True. Yes It's True, Texas Glitter, and they are heads apart early. Texas Glitter just a bit quicker in front to half length. Yes, it's true down inside second with Life is a World third. Five lengths back to Lucky Roberto and Corroborator. Up the back stretch, the speedy Texas Glitter. And just as speedy as Yes, it's true. Through a quarter and 22 seconds flat. Just in behind them, Life is a World. A break of three back to Lucky Roberto and Corroborator. Passing the half mile pole. Yes, it's true. And Texas Glitter locked in a head-to-head -head duel here into the far turn. Texas Glitter and Yes, it's true. The duel intensifying. The half and 44 seconds flat. Farther back, Life is a World third. Lucky Roberto is drawn within four lengths of the duel up front. And farther back, Corroborator at the quarter pole. Texas Glitter by a head. Yes, it's true. Continues the fight on Gamely. Those two have been head-to-head. -head. They're still that way as they come into the final furlong. Yes, it's true. Texas Glitter, inseparable through six furlongs. They're inseparable in the final furlong. Texas Glitter, yes, it's true. Coming down to the line. They're still nip and tuck. Yes, it's true. Texas Glitter, what a show of speed. Here's the line. It's yes, it's true by a flared nostril. It's so close. Almost a replay of the Hutchison, except instead of uh, Texas Glitter, Dooling would bet me best. This time he duels with Yes, It's True. Bailey down on the inside. Texas Glitter on the outside. Yes, It's True hangs on by a desperate head and a game effort after yet. Texas Glitter actually put a head in front. Bailey comes back and beats him. Uh, Johnny Velasquez didn't use the whip very much in the stretch here. Kind of surprised. Little bumping in the stretch, but didn't really seem to affect anyone. But these two very competitive, very fast horses battle through tremendous fractions. 22 flat. The middle quarter here is 22.07, just spectacular race time, and a lot of us thought Texas Glitter might run poorly after that big effort in the Hutchison, but he's right back on his game for Todd Pletcher, but unfortunately falls ahead short. The winner, yes, is true, ridden by Jerry Bailey, trained by D. Wayne Lucas, son of Is It True, wins by a head. Texas Glitter, Johnny Velasquez, Todd Pletcher, former Lucas assistant second. Lucky Roberto, the New York bred winner of the hopeful, Shows a little bit of signs of getting back into the game here. Rallies up for third, but not threatening the top two. Final time for the mile 16th, about miles and final time for the seven furlongs, 122 and 1 fifth. Certainly the biggest race of this past weekend, the Grade 1 Florida Derby, the highlight event of the Gulfstream Park meet every year. $750,000 added for three year olds. They're going a mile and an eighth at Gulfstream Park. Very exciting race, and let's go down to Tom Durkin's call. They're in the gate. Adonis acting up in the gate. Settle down. And they're off in the Florida Derby. Valid Trayfair breaks alertly on the inside. So too did Cat Thief and Certain. Those three to vie for the early lead with Vicker coming away fourth as Adonis has got it to the rail fifth. They move for the clubhouse turn. Valid Trayfair on the rail. Cat Thief right alongside to run with him early. Certain running in third. Vicker taking four wide into the first turn fourth. Adonis rides the rails in fifth and Wonder Trost is right there alongside him. Then Casanova Star. Grits and Hard Toast is about seven lengths from the early lead. And then First American Alley's Alley will be the early trailer as the field moves into the backstretch. It's Cat Thief by a neck. The opening quarter went in 23 and 4 fifth seconds. Here comes Certain to challenge Cat Thief for the lead. Vicker looms just outside the pacemakers, now running in third, and Valid Trayfair has dropped back to fourth. Wonder Tross is up in between horses. He's eager to go, but well in hand there by Jerry Bailey. The opening half mile was very sensible here, 48 and 1 fifth seconds. Four furlongs to go here. It is still Cat Thief and Certain running one, two. Vicker looms large on the outside third. Valid Trayfair is running in fourth. Wonder Tross is only three links from the lead. Casanova Star trying to mount a bit on the outside. Then first American followed by Ali's Alley. Adonis is second to last. 
and the trailer is Grits and Hard Toast. They're coming to the top of the stretch. They've run three quarters in one, 12 and three. It's certain in between horses emerging with a narrow lead. Cat Thief on the inside right there. Vicar on the outside. Just in behind them, it's Wonder Truss. And First American on the far outside with a huge upset chance. They're in the final furlong. Here comes Wonder Truss. Vicar right there. Cat Thief toward the inside. Vicar battling on Gamely. Cat Thief is game two on the outside. Wonder Truss, a blanket finish. Vicar got it by a nose. Vicker obviously won the Fount of Youth and didn't really uh, excite the betters because he comes back here as the co-second choice in the odds, 9 to 2, second choice, uh, gets the job done here by a desperate nose with Shane Sellers. Vicker shows a new dimension in the Florida Derby and the Fount of Youth, he went to the front. This time he sat off the early pace, set by surprisingly Cat Thief down on the rail. Race was kind of marred by the scratch of three rings. Uh, that one certainly would ensure an honest pace in this race. Without her in the race, she scratched because of, she drew an outside post. So now three rings out. She'll wait for the Bonnie Miss. Cat Thief finds himself on the lead with Pat Day. Pat tried to back down the early fractions as best as he could, tried to turn it into a kicker's race through the stretch. But Vicker and Shane Sellers repeat their Fountain of Youth victory with a nose win again here in the Florida Derby. The son of Wild again out of an El Gran Senior Mare. Cost $265,000 at auction two years ago as a yearling. Trained by Hall of Fame trainer Carl Nasca. Vicker now heads on to the Bluegrass as his final prep race for the Kentucky Derby. Won the trials, the horse who was a good third last year in the Remsen. Came back to Florida this year, was a good allowance winner down there in very fast time. Took a lot of money and rightfully so won the trust. Big effort here with Jerry Bailey. Had a little trouble turning for home, was able to get clear and almost ran down Vicker in the final strides. Cat Thief down in the inside with Pat Day and the Wayne Lucas stable battles all the way, but unfortunately, I don't think Pat really intended to be on the lead, but when uh, ho speed horses like uh, uh, certain took back and valid tray fair took back. Pat just wound up on the lead and that was that was unfortunate for him. He'll also come back in the bluegrass. So many of these horses will go on to the bluegrass, at least the top two or three. Zito always seems to use the bluegrass as his final prep race for the Kentucky Derby. So a good renewal of the Florida Derby. Very exciting race, just like last year when we saw Lil's Lad and Cape Town battle right to the wire. Vicker wins this one by a nose, won the try second, Cat Thief third. The final time uh, for all the speed figure people, they're going to be a little bit disappointed in this final time as they were in the Fountain of Youth. The nine furlongs covered in one fifty and four fifths of a second. Heading on to Sunday at Gulfstream Park, they continued their stakes action with the Dilla Rose stakes for three year olds and up. This is Phillies and Mares. It's a grade three event going for $75,000. Let's head back down there and watch this turf race as called by Tom Durkin. And they're off. Pleasant music toward the outside, looking to get to the early lead. Down toward the inside is Circus Charmer. In between those two, it's I.C. Cindy. A comfortable stage, uh, pace has been established in the early stages here by Pleasant Music, who is in front and in hand. Circus Charmer hard held on the inside. I see Cindy up close to this dawdling pace as they move into the first turn. And then it's Roberta T running in fourth. The opening quarter goes in 25 seconds flat. A pokey pace here with Pleasant Music on top by two. I see Cindy running in second. Circus Charmer is now third. On the outside is uh, bursting fourth in fourth position. On the far outside, Lover's Knot now, and Lover's Knot is in the clear and moving willingly, followed closely by Roberta T. Zinfandal is lingering near the back of the pack. The trailer with the slow pace is Mudslinger. The opening half mile in 49 and four fifth seconds. They continue down the back stretch. Now the tempo is quickening and there goes Lover's Knot up after the lead. Lover's Knot taking charge with a decisive move moving into the far turn. Pleasant Music is now back running in second and I see Cindy is third. Circus Charmer hitting her best stride and she's moving through an opening on the inside. She's fourth bursting fourth now back to fifth followed by Roberta T. Then farther back it's Zinfandel and Mudslinger and the field turns for home. Lover's Knot shoulder to shoulder with Pleasant Music at the top of the stretch. Circus Charmer coming with her run now. 
Then on the far outside is bursting forth. They're in the final furlong. Lover's not fully extended. And Pleasant Music still has some fight left. Here comes Zinfandel, who's flying at the finish. Here's the wire. Three noses on the wire together. Christophe Clement continues to do well down in South Florida with his turf mask. This one, Love is Not, a British-bred daughter of groom dancer, wins this one by a head in a game effort over Pleasant Music, who set all the fractions while down on the inside. Zinfandel makes a late run here with Robbie Davis, but it falls just a little bit short at 16 to 1. Love is Not, the 8 to 5 favorite. Once again, Jerry Bailey and another stakes one, especially on the grass. Uh, draw off to win this one by a head in a game effort. Pleasant Music second, Zinfandel third. When a train by Christophe Clemento had the stakes fillies ran 1-2 in the Orchard the week before. Final time for the mile 16th, and this is, this is nowhere near what the, the males ran the day before in the Fort Lauderdale. But this was a much slower pace, early 25.07 for the first quarter, but they finish up pretty strong. Final time for the mile 16th, 1.42 and 1.50. We're going to take a quick break now, but when we come back, we're going to be taking you down to Oak Lawn Park. Some exciting racing over the, over the weekend, the Razorback Handicap and the Hot Springs Handicap. We're also going to be heading down to the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds meet is continuing on, very exciting. We had three-year-old fillies and three-year-old colts, both prepping for major races over the springtime. And we'll be right back with the south, Southern Action. And Hallery Hunter is going to take the 74th running of the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. Victory Gallop puts the head in front. And Victory Gallop, Hanneman Highway. Victory Gallop going to Kentucky. Coronado's Quest has won the wood by two and a half lengths. Coming Saturday, April 10th, you'll have another chance to wager on the big three, pick three races. Stop by any Capital OTB location or wager through your phone a bit account on the Toyota Bluegrass, Wood Memorial, and the Arkansas Derby, Saturday, April 10th. Continuing our weekend stakes action, next we're going to take you down to Oak Lawn Park where on Saturday they ran the Grade 3 Razorback with a $125,000 guaranteed purse. We had four-year-olds and up going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Oak Lawn Park for Terry Wallace's call. And they're off in the Razorback Handicap. There goes Fun to Run at the rail alongside is Desert Air. And those two go battling out for the lead. Scott Scoundrel rushes up into third at the rail. That is Treat Me Doc in fourth. Black Tie Dinner is fifth, followed by Magnify and uh, Omar. Fairly green as they move on to the turn. The leader is Fun to Run. To the outside. Desert Air is second. Treat Me Doc's got the rail third. Scott Scoundrel fourth. The opening quarter 23 and one. Racehorse time as they move to the back stretch in. Fun to run and Sydney Knowles showing the way. Desert Air second. Treat Me Doc in a striking position there at the rail in third. Scott Scoundrel is fourth. And then it's a pack of three. It includes Magnify Black Tie Dinner and Omar Fairly Green is at the rail. Six lengths from front to back as they continue down the back stretch and they go past the half mile in the Razorback in 47 and two. Now sneaking through at the rail, here comes Treat Me Doc to challenge with fun to run in desert air. And those three have pulled four lengths in front of Scott Scoundrel. Magnify kicks it into gear fifth. After that is Black Tie Dinner and Omar Fairly Green. They move to the final turn. Three of them battle for the lead. At the rail, it's Treat Me Doc to the middle desert air. Between those two it is fun to run. Three quarters, one 12 and one. And here they come into the stretch of the Razorback Handicap. Desert Air to the outside has the lead. Here comes Magnify now with his run. Treat me, Doc, at the rail. It is Desert Air leading, but Magnify is full of run now in second. And Black Tide Dinner to the outside coming on in third. The leader is Desert Air. Magnify is second. They come for the wire. Desert Air length and a half. Desert Air. Full of runs, gonna win the Razorback Handicap. Magnify second and Black Tie Dinner finishing third. Midwest Storms left this track very, very sloppy and the one who benefited the most was the three horse here, Desert Air and Corey Lannery. Ships up from the fairgrounds off a couple of good wins down there. Runs down, Magnify in the lane, Black Tie Dinner rallies up for third. Scratched a little bit lively. Bobby Barnett didn't like the looks of the track. A little bit lively. He's never won on a wet track, so he sat this one out. 
leave and magnify as the betting favorite. Scott Scoundrel, the leading Louisiana bred of all time, wasn't able to penetrate the top three. Pretty even race. This is usually a race for the Oakland Park handicap. Unfortunately, I think uh, these horses are going to be swamped by the shipper horses that will show up at Oakland during the racing festival of the South. But Desert Air, a son of Manzotti, bred in Texas, trained by Mike Stidham, stable down at Fairgrounds, win this one by length and a quarter, magnify second with Red Hot Tim Ducey, third black tie dinner. Final time for the mile of 16th on a very sloppy track, 144 and three-fifths. On Sunday at Oaklawn Park, sprinters were in the spotlight. The Hot Springs Stakes was run for four-year-olds and up. This is a $50,000 guaranteed purse going six furlongs. Let's head back to Oaklawn Park once more for Terry Wallace's call. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Hot Springs. And wasting no time, E.J. Harley bounds out there for the lead. Magic toe to the outside, Highland Ice at the rail. It's two lengths back to Heart Surgeon along the inside. Count the Blues. Another three and a half to Whirling Blade. And as usual, Chindi is giving them all a head start as they dash down the backstretch. And with the lead, it is E.J. Harley and Highland Ice trying to keep up with him on the inside. The opening quarter, 22 seconds flat. Three and a half back to Magic Doe in third count. The Blues is fourth. Then to the outside is Heart Surgeon. Another six lengths back to Whirling Blade and Chindi has about 15 or 18 lengths to make up on the turn with E.J. Harley showing away. Highland Ice second, Magic Doe moving up third. Count the Blues fourth. And here they come into the stretch of the Hot Springs, the half in 45 and four. To the middle of the track, it is E.J. Harley leading. Magic Doe is right there in second. Two and a half back to count the Blues in third. E.J. Harley digs in. Magic Doe is coming on. Back in the field. Coming along the inside, it is Chindy. The leader, E.J. Harley. Magic Doe, and here's Chindy flying at the rail. E.J. Harley, Chindy flying. Magic Doe at the wire. It's going to take a photo to separate E.J. Harley and Magic Doe and Chindy, a fast closing third. E.J. Harley repeats his win in the King Cotton last time out by a desperate nose here on a, on a dry and up sloppy track. Hangs on by a nose at a mad, over Magic Doe. The third horse, the one coming up the rail, the gray blur, Chindy, is one of the most exciting horses in America. You saw how far back he was, and Tim Ducey had him in a tremendous drive up the rail, but it fell just slightly short. This is the last prep race for the grade three Count Fleet, which is run also in the Racing Festival of South. E.J. Hawley's now won both races, the King Cotton and here in the Hot Springs, both on the front end, very fast. Arkansas bred son of beat inflation, usually dominates on the front end when he's able to. The track was a little off yesterday as far as the running time, so E.J. Hawley is able to hang on by a tough nose of a long shot seven magic doe. Chindi, I think one of the most exciting horses around to watch. Rally falls a, a, a half length short, but Chindi won the count fleet last year, so he's looking for a better pace scenario when they go on to the count fleet. Winning time for the six furlongs, 111 flat. Next, we're going to head down to New Orleans, Louisiana for the Fairgrounds Oaks. Fairgrounds Oaks for three-year-old fillies going a mile and a sixteenth for a $350,000 purse. This race featured last year's two-year-old champion filly, Silver Bullet Day. Let's head down to Tony Bentley's call of the Fairgrounds Oaks. And a good start for all here in the Fairgrounds Oaks. Walena on the inside goes for the lead. Golden Illusion is next. Runaway Venus is at the rail. Then comes Boomtown Girl. Back towards the rail, Mrs. Know-It-All. Then comes Silver Bullet Day. She's now sixth, and Brushed Hallery is seventh. And they start down the backstretch. Walena is on the lead here by two. On the outside, Golden Illusion and Runaway Venus is right there at the rail. Then comes Mrs. Know-It-All, racing in fourth by a head. Boomtown Girl is next. Silver Bullet Day is right there in sixth, just about five lengths off the pace. She's moving up three wide, and then it's four lengths. Back to Brushed Hallery, seventh, as they approach the half-mile pole. And Walena has the lead. Runaway Venus, Silver Bullet Day lets it out a notch. She's up into third now. It's three lengths back. Mrs. Know-It-All. Boomtown Girl is next. Golden Illusion 
is finished for the day and then brushed Hallery. Now coming to the top of the stretch, Runaway Venus on the inside, Silver Bullet Day. Wall Lena gives way and they've straightened away. Silver Bullet Day has the lead, Runaway Venus. Game on the inside, then comes Wallena. Here they are at the eighth pole. Now Silver Bullet Day gets in gear. She's clear by some three. Runaway Venus next and Wallena. And a late run on the outside by Brushed Hallery. But at the wire, it will be Silver Bullet Day winning it by about four. Well, if they had a chance to beat this filly, this was the day. Wide trip all the way. Gary had to make three moves down the backside, around the turn, and then turning for home. And still, despite losing all that ground, Silver Bullet Day dominates this race by three lengths as the three to 10 favorite. Just a spectacular performance on a very gooey, wet track. Uh, second, Runaway Venus wins the photo over Brushed Hallery. Uh, Brushed Hallery is the half to Bluegrass when a Hallery Hunter seems to have the same one run running style, but Silver Bullet Day does a tremendous performance here winning off by three in the final time of 144 and four fifths. Next, we're gonna head back down to New Orleans when on Sunday, the Louisiana Derby was run this weekend. They're big racing down there for three-year-olds featuring another good group of horses. This time, Bob Baffert brought another one of his big guns into town. This time, it was General Challenge. The Louisiana Derby, a grade two event with a $600,000 added purse. This is three-year-olds also going a mile in a 16th. Let's head back down to New Orleans and Tony Bentley's call. They're all in line. And they're off in the Louisiana Derby. General Challenge broke last. Royal Hero alertly for the lead. Val Hall is next. Then comes Kimberlite Pipe and Ecton Park on the inside. Answer Lively is up on the outside. Then comes Silver Chadra. Followed by Stella Brush and General Challenge is the trailer. They head to the back stretch. Royal Hero is under a hold by Ardwan on the lead by a length. Val Hall is next on the outside. Answer Lively. Kimberlite Pipe is fourth at the rail. It's four lengths back to Ecton Park in fifth. Silver Chadra. Right there in sixth, then Stellar Brush on the outside. General Challenge is still eighth, and I'd say about 10 lengths off the pace as they head to the half mile pole. And Royal Hero at 99 to one on the lead three parts of a length. Val Hall right there and answer lively on the outside. Kimberlite Pipe is next, then Stellar Brush. Now General Challenge begins to gain on the outside. Silver Chadra is next in Ecton Park. They turn for home in the Derby. Val Hall answer lively. General Challenge way on the outside comes on by the 316th pole. Answer lively. Val Hall is next. And General Challenge fading now. And uh, as Ecton Park gains on the outside. And on the inside, there's Kimberlite Pipe. Kimberlite Pipe, a neck. Answer lively. And Ecton Park, Kimberlite Pipe wins it a neck. Well, Bob can't win them all, even though it looks like he's going to. General Challenge makes a big move on the turn. Big, strong, general meeting. Cole looked like he was going to get by everyone, and then he just came up flat when the running got real serious. And Robbie Alvarado and Kimberly Pipe get up on the inside and draw off to win this one by a head. And so lively. Last year's two-year-old cult champion still can't get to the winner's circle in 1999, but runs a good race here with new rider Pat Day. Ecton Park comes down the middle of track with Shane Sellers. Their late rally falls another head short. Winning time for the mile 16th on a drying up fast track, 143 and two fifths of a second. We're gonna take another quick break here and when we come back, we're gonna head west. We're gonna be stopping out at Turf Paradise as well as taking a look at some racing from Santa Anita Park and then of course, finishing up our show today with our coverage of New York's aqueduct action this past weekend. It's the first weekend of spring and the stakes action continues to warm up. Opening weekend at Hialeah on Saturday finds two grade three events. First, the $200,000 Widener Handicap for three-year-olds and up, and the $100,000 Everglades for three-year-olds. At Aqueduct, Phillies and Mares vie for $75,000 in the grade three Next Move Handicap. 
Oak Lawn Park has the $125,000 Rebel Stakes for three-year-olds. And from the fairgrounds, it's the $100,000 Victoria Last Stakes for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and up. Sunday's action from Aqueduct finds three-year-olds going postward in the grade three, $150,000 Gotham Stakes. Oak Lawn Park has the $200,000 Oak Lawn Park Breeders' Cup for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. From the fairgrounds, it's a $150,000 Pelletieri Breeders' Cup handicap for four-year-olds and up, and at Hialeah, the $75,000 Patricia Stakes for three-year-old fillies. Catch all of the exciting action at any Capital OTB location. Next, we're going to head down to Turf Paradise, where on Saturday they ran the Phoenix Gold Cup. This is a $100,000 guaranteed stakes race for three-year-olds and up. They're going six furlongs. Let's head down to the... Turf Paradise course for Luke Krybosh's call, call of the Gold Cup. Off and running in the Phoenix Gold Cup. It's a fast start for Better Choice to the front, joined quickly by Brass Ambassador. Wild Wonder up to join the fray, a close third. Eyes are redhead right there. Racing fourth, Moke Express moves up between horses fifth. Three back go, Bucks is seven links off the pace. Then that's using the old bean, followed by Innovative Silver Blazer. After a slow start, General Gems at the back of the pack, up the back stretch, letting out all the stops out here. It's Brass Ambassador, three parts of a length in front of Wild Wonder, who's poised to challenge on the outside. Better Choice right there, hung out three wide third. Mocha Express now shaken up a clear cut four, three back to go Bucks. Eyes are redhead comes under early pressure. That's using the old bean and innovative silver blazer and general gem sweeping into the quarter pole. Brass ambassador tough at the rail. Wild Wonder starts to push on by now. Better choice on the extreme outside. Mocha Express is now stoking up his rally from fourth. Wild Wonder taking the lead past the eighth pole and he accelerates away to lead him by two. Mocha Express gamely up in his second. Here comes that's using the being on the far side, Wild Wonder well clear, Wild Wonder and Russell Bays to win the Gold Cup. Wild Wonder by a length and a half to Mocha Express. That's using the old bean. We're in Russell Bay ship in here for Greg Gilchrist. They're going to draw off to win this one by two easy lengths. Rallies up for second from the back of the pack. That's using the old bean and St Scott Stevens. Gets up for third, Wild Wonder. This is a race that oftentimes threatens the world record for six furlongs. No such threat on Saturday, though, but Wild Wonder, the game winner. Another Wild again getting stakes, uh, went under his belt. They're going to win this one by two in the final time of 108 and three fifths of a second. Next, we're going to head up to Northern California, where at Bay Meadows, they ran the Bay Meadows Dash on Saturday. This is a $50,000 added stakes race for three year olds and up. It's Phillies and Mares. Let's head out to Bay Meadows for the race call. And there they go. It's a beautiful beginning. Teresa's tizzy is flashing good speed. She is joined by Mr. Crafty, who now gets the lead. Lady Tap closest to the rail is moving forward. Mountain Medley between runners. Isa Bonbon is fifth through the early stages. Then we'll go to Ulawalani. And the trailer is August Queen. Through the opening quarter, Mr. Crafty on the lead by two. Racing in second is Lady Tap. Mountain Medley is third. Far outside is eyes of Bon Bon. Teresa's tizzy is losing ground to the rail. Ulawa Lani is six lengths from the front. And August Queen begins her rally. Through the far turn, Mr. Crafty by a half a length to the outside. Lady Tap is pressuring in second. Mountain Medley is three wide in third. Eyes of Bon Bon gets to the rail. She's within two lengths of the front. And another four to August Queen. Turning into the stretch in the Bay Meadows dash. Lady Tap now on level terms with Mr. Crafty. To the outside is Mountain Medley. Eyes of Bon Bon looks for room. She's working her way off the rail inside the final 16. Lady Tap, Mountain Medley. Who wants the dash more? Mountain Medley or Lady Tap? They drive to the wire. Mountain Medley. Mountain Medley, a daughter of Mountain Cat from the first crop of Mountain Cat. This four-year-old filly draws off to win this one by a head over Lady Top. Is a bonbon is up for third here with John Scott. Mount Mountain Medley covers the six furlongs in 109 and three-fifths of a second. Santa Anita had a big feature on Saturday, the San Felipe, a grade two event for three-year-olds. This race was featuring a matchup between two of Bob Baffert's big guns, Exploit from Bob and Beverly Lewis, and as, as well as Prime Timber, Aaron Jones's horse who finished second last time out when running in the San Rafael. The San Felipe on Saturday was run for a $250,000 guaranteed purse, three-year-olds going the mile in a 16th. 
Let's head out for Trevor Denman's call. Feel for the San Felipe sent on their way and exploit breaks beautifully. Nice and smooth from the number two hole, but now here comes High Wire Act and High Wire Act goes up to lead exploit who's going slowly in second. Prime Timber at the rail is racing third and fighting Falcon on the outside. Eagleton has the white colors behind that. Company approval is racing back second last and Finders Gold is allowed a lag early. He's 12 off them. Past the seven eights pole and Eddie Dallahuse and High Wire Act. They opening up on them. High Wire Act has gone clear by six lengths. Here's the Bob Baffert duo racing a joint second exploit there. Now Prime Timber's been taken back at the rail as Fighting Falcon goes up on the outside to take third. Eagleton is racing in fifth. He's eight lengths off these leaders. And then it's another five back to the long shot company approval and Finders Gold inside of him. They've got to be 13 off this leader. They run past the half mile in the San Felipe and high wire act. Nice and relaxed out here. He got himself an easy lead and he's still clear by two. Exploit is now starting to cut into that lead second and Prime Timber moving into contention down at the rail. The favourites, one, two, three with three eights to go. Fighting Falcon on the outside and Finders Gold making headway fifth. They're approaching the quarter pole and High Wire Act finding more on the lead. Exploit is up to take him on and Prime Timber now back in third. Heads a turn for home. High Wire Act at the rail but Exploit is now up alongside Prime Timber on the outside third. Homeward bound now and Exploit takes a narrow lead. High wire act and here's Prime Timber flying down the centre of the track and Prime Timber's going to collar them both. Prime Timber coming home to take the San Felipe. Prime Timber from Exploit to head back to High Wire Act. Well, the only person who can beat Bob Baffert is Bob Baffert. Exploit goes into the race undefeated, chases the early fractions of High Wire Act and Ellie De La Husse. Passes that one turning for home, but unfortunately, David Flores swings Prime Timber out to the middle of track, and he's going to run down his stablemate to draw off to win this one by two lengths. Exploit, good second, but no longer undefeated for Bob and Beverly Lewis. They check in second. High wire act after setting all the early fractions still hangs around for third. So Baffert in this race was runs first, second, and actually fourth would find his goal. Final time for the mile and a 16th, 142 flat. Next, we're going to head back to the East Coast for Saturday's racing in New York. They ran the Distaff Breeders' Cup Handicap. This is a $175,000 added purse for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going seven furlongs. In this race, we had John Kimmel's Katinka as a big favorite coming out of a good second-place effort in the Barbara Fritchie down in Maryland. Let's take a look now at the race and listen to John and Brial's call. And they're off. American Dynasty on the extreme outside. Flamingo A is coming through. Katinka broke well. She's in third in the early going. They move on to the main track with Flamingo A leading. On the outside is American Dynasty. Then it's a length and a half to Katinka in third. Pallet Knife is running in fourth. Scott Center on the outside in fifth. Passagiata is sixth. Then it's Memories of Gold in seventh. Three and a half lengths to Tomorrow's Sunshine in eighth and trailing the field is Furlough. And the opening quarter mile went in 23 seconds. On the inside, it is Flamingo Way leading here by a head. American Dynasty on the outside is second. Katinka, the big favorite, is next in third. Scott Center on the outside in fourth. Then the stablemates, Pallet Knife and Passagiata. It's three and a half lengths back to Tomorrow's Sunshine. Furlough is on the inside, and then Memories of Gold in the half mile went in 46 and one. There goes Katinka now on the outside, and Katinka sweeps to the lead. Katinka is in front. Extreme outside, it is Scott Senna. Now coming on through is Tomorrow's Sunshine. Furlough is gaining ground on the rail. They're coming for the 16th pole. It's Katinka and Furlough on the outside. Tomorrow's Sunshine. Katinka Tinka, furlough, terrific finish in the distaff. It's a photo. It looked like furlough got there. Furlough, very well-bred daughter of Easy Goer out of the good race mare Blighty, rallies up the inside here with Herb Castillo Jr. to win this race by a head at nice 14 to 1 odds. Katinka once again gets caught in the stretch, got caught in the Barbara Fitchie by Passagiata, gets caught again on Saturday, but still runs a good effort on only her second start of the year. Long shot tomorrow's sunshine. And Joe Bravo check in for third. Running time for the seven furlongs on the Aqueduct main track, 123 and 150. 
On Sunday at Aqueduct, sprinters were once again in the spotlight, going seven furlongs in the toboggan handicap. This is a $75,000 added race for three-year-olds and up, sprinting on the main Aqueduct track. Let's head back down to New York for John and Brielle's call. And they're off. Out for the lead is Brushed On. Brushed On has the early advantage. Wouldn't we all now comes up on the inside. Wouldn't we all Brushed On heads apart for the lead and Wouldn't we all now grabs the lead. Brushed On is running in second. Esteem Friend is next in third. King Roller is in fourth. Then the stable mates, Al Bahar and Mr. Sinatra, they're right together. Diamond is the trailer in seventh. They move up the back stretch. Wouldn't we all by three quarters of a length. Brushed On is on the outside in second. The first quarter went in 22 and three. Esteemed friend races in third, three lengths from the front. Then two and a half lengths to King Roller. On the outside is Al Bahar. In between horses, Diamond and Mr. Sinatra. And there, midway around the turn, wouldn't we all continues to lead here? The half mile was drilled in 44 and four. Brushed on is second now by two. Esteem friend is third there in the stretch. Wouldn't we all with the lead? On the outside is brushed on. Then comes Esteem friend racing in third. Diamond takes fourth, coming down for the 16th pole. Wouldn't we all leading by two. Brushed on is second. Wouldn't we all wins the toboggan by almost three? Well, just to show you what a little bit of moisture does at this racetrack. Main track had played dull all week, started to rain on Sunday. Track suddenly quickens up. Richie's, Richard Migliori sends, wouldn't we all, to the front, opens up a lead and hangs on every step of the way, dominating this race in very fast time. Brushed on and Chucky Lopez Juan Saray combination hangs on for second after chasing every step. Esteemed friend, a two to one favorite, ridden by Mike Lezzi, checks in for third. Running time for the seven furlongs on the suddenly fast Aqueduct main track, a minute 20 and four fifths of a second. That concludes our look back at this past weekend's stakes events and certainly some very exciting stakes racing this past weekend, I would say. Certainly, uh, just uh, great racing from all over the country and, and with the exception of general challenge, coming up empty in the drive on Sat on Sunday in the Louisiana Derby. I mean, Baffert just is in the winner's circle all over the country, and the only person that beats Bob Baffert right now is Bob Baffert. Unfortunately, Bob has some big, big decisions coming up in the next month because eventually he has to sort all these three-year-olds out, both male and female, and Silver Bullet Day was just spectacular on Saturday. We weren't able to show you the Oaks because of complete lack of cooperation from Santa Anita. So, uh, the, the result there was excellent meeting, winning, but only by a neck and a, and a very game effort. But still, her entry mate almost beat her once again. Baffert runs 1-2 in the Oaks. But he's going to have to make some decisions coming up as to who goes to San Anita Derby. And at that point, whoever doesn't go might go to Arkansas, might go to uh, Keeneland for the Bluegrass, and, and certainly has to keep in mind the Ashland, a grade one at Keeneland for three-year-old Phillies, and then eventually the Kentucky Oaks run the day before the Kentucky Derby. But Bob had a big weekend, and with the exception of General Challenge, kind of stubbing his toe. Uh, he, was, he was either first or second in all these races. So just a huge weekend for the Baffert clan, and, 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 and pretty much to be expected. His horses just continue to run well, and despite the longer distances, or Silver Bullet Day overcoming a wide trip on a very sloppy track, just nothing seems to be able to stop her yet. So big weekend, all sorts of exciting races all over the country. And, It'll continue right through the spring. It certainly will. And next week's Horses and Courses, we do hope you'll join us for it. We're going to have the Bonnie Miss, the closing stakes race of the Gulfstream meet. Gulfstream has had a very successful meet this spring, winter and spring, and uh, just had a really good, exciting group of racing down there. You saw some exciting stakes races from last weekend. Uh, the Bonnie Miss will feature a horse shipping in from California. This is Olympic Charmer from Ron McAnally's barn. She'll be stretching out to two turns for the first time and taking on the very tough three ring, Eddie Plisa's horse, who was scratched from Saturday's grade one Florida Derby when she drew an outside post. She's a very speedy filly, so the Bonnie Miss should be a very exciting race. It's a grade two race to close out Gulfstream Park's winter meet for 1999. 
We're also going to be heading to Hialeah for the weekend. The first weekend of Hialeah racing will feature the Grade 3 Everglades for three-year-olds going on the grass, as well as the Grade 3 Widener Handicap for older horses. Taking a look onto the Triple Crown Trail, next week we'll be showing you the Tampa Bay Derby, which will feature the stakes debut of Menifee, a highly regarded cult from the, uh, the barn mm -hmm. of Elliott Walden. We'll be seeing him in the Tampa Bay Derby next week. Looks like that race is going to shape up to be a very exciting race, uh, and it's usually not a race that is that prominently placed in the Triple Crown Trail, but with Menifee trying two turns for the first time should be very exciting. Also next weekend in New York, we'll be running the Gotham Stakes. Expected in that race will be successful Peel, who we saw in the Fountain of Youth making his debut for the year. He should be ready to move up for John Kimmel off of that effort. Appermont coming in from California, as is Aristotle. We'll also be seeing, probably seeing, best turn winner Badge coming back on the Aqueduct main track, at which he's already been very successful. So the Gotham is shaping up to be a good race, in addition to its prominent position as a prep race for the Grade 2 Wood Memorial to be run later on in the spring. Well, that's it for this week's issue of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Leggett for Dick Powell. We hope to see everyone next week.